Hi, Sophie. Hi, Sen. Hi, everyone. And welcome to How to Catch a Fearsome Critter, Episode 2.、Mm-hmm. Today, we're talking about the gumbaroo, a fearsome critter who eats a lot and sometimes explodes. Fearsome critters are creatures who hang around logging camps in North American forests, and lumberjacks exchange stories about these creatures in late 19th and early 20th century.、Mm-hmm. And most of our information comes from the 1910s Fearsome Creatures of the Lumber Woods by William T. Cox and 1939s Fearsome Critters by Henry H. Tryon. So, the gumbaroo. The gumbaroo. Let's first talk about the gumbaroo's appearance. Certainly, sir. We have two very different depictions of the gumbaroo. Yes. First, let's talk about the 1910 one. All right. That one, I think, looks pretty cute. It's like an angry, angry wombat. Could you please describe it in more detail? It's an extremely fat bear that's like. Got huge eyebrows. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you see the look on its face? It looks startled. It looks like it's a guy who died here. Well, it's funny you say that, Sophie, because when I saw this picture, I had a vision. Oh. I'd like you to close your eyes and imagine the following The gumbaroo is sitting on its front porch. With a mug of coffee in one hand and a newspaper in another. <laughs> oh god, I thought it was going to be it's, it's sitting there and the newspaper is delivered and then it's got a very startling story on the front. Oh my god, I like your thing better. Because I was going to say it's just like startled by the human in the picture that we saw. Oh, okay. Am I going to have to recommission this? Fuck you. <laughs> Sophie, I'm going to paste something in the chat <laughs> in our Discord. And、okay. I'd like you to describe this drawing. <laughs> <laughs> It's what you just described. It is a gumbaroo、um, reading a newspaper on, on his front porch. And、um, clearly, what's happened is he was just minding his own business. And then a lumberjack is showing up and he's like, <laughs> And Sophie, can you tell me what's the name of the newspaper gumbaroo is reading? Oh, the Critter News. And I commissioned this, and this was drawn by Twisty. Thank you, Twisty. It's beautiful. And you can find him at artstation.comslash Twisty Reptile.、Mm. Are, are you trying to make like your own version of this book? But there's just like art of each animal on each page. I didn't think that far, I was just going by impulse. Hi, Sophie here. Sin doing things impulsively is the backbone of this podcast, and thankfully she's surrounded by a number of highly talented enablers and me. Examples of impulsive ideas that went on to be mystifyingly popular include Ebruitus, Nostradamus the Vampire, an episode by episode deep dive into Reborn, Sketchy Boss Arenas, the unedited Lock Shield episode. Sophie, so there's a couple more descriptions of this gumbaroo in the 1910 book. Yes, there are. In size, it resembles a black bear. It has a black collar, but it could be because it lives in the base of burnt out cedar trees. It has prominent eyebrows. It has prickly hair on its chin. Uh huh. And its body is smooth, tough, and shiny. Yes. A little bit like the Terminator. Why did you go to the Terminator? Smooth, tough, and shiny. That's the Terminator. The metal or the Arnold Schwarzenegger part? The Arnold Schwarzenegger one underneath is、yeah. smooth, tough, and shiny, so both. Alright, okay. Do you want to take that back, Sophie? You want to admit that my analogy made perfect sense? Well, alright, this is going to come up later on, I guess,、mm-hmm. about the Gumbaroo's consistency. 
It says here that the gumbaroo is smooth because it's basically made of rubber. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't get the Terminator from that. All right, but later it also says that bullets bounce off of it, so... Yes, the bullets don't bounce off the Terminator. They bounce off of the metal part of the Terminator. What version of the Terminator am I currently picturing? Okay, imagine the Gumbaroo, right? <laughs> imagine imagine this round bear. Now imagine it's an Austrian bodybuilder. <laughs> No! It's like an exoskeleton, it's not an internal skeleton. Could you just say a ball? Yeah, imagine a ball that's like tough, smooth, and shiny like metal, like a metal ball. So it's a Terminator. <laughs> it's in him. <laughs> Hi, Sophie here. Ipin is an egg-shaped monstrosity from Kitekyo Hitman Reborn, a baffling anime that Sin forced Richard to watch, leading directly to his death. Ipin is introduced as a disturbing, egg-shaped baby, before being aged up to a teenager. To the surprise of the characters, Ipin was really a girl. To the surprise of the audience, Ipin is human. Back to the podcast. The Gumbaroo does have a weakness. When exposed to heat, it explodes. So keep that in mind for later when we try to catch one. Are we trying to catch them or kill them? <laughs> Thank you, Sophie. Now, this whole description makes me think of bear. Yeah. Like, it's kind of possible that a lumberjack went to the forest, so a bear didn't see the details. Oh, it's a gumbaroo! Yeah. It kind of makes sense. That's what they always say in Monster Quest. Oh, yeah? There's always someone who says, like, I live in these woods 25 years, I've seen a lot of bear, let me tell you what, that were no bear. <laughs> I've never seen a bear like that. That were no bear. I were no bear. <laughs> Thank you, Sophie. Now, there's a second depiction of Gumbaroo, which comes from the 1939 Fearsome Critters by Henry A. Tran. Yeah, it, it's let itself go a bit. It's, it's a little insane. Could you please describe the picture? I don't think I can. <laughs> I'm going to paste the text in Discord if you don't mind reading. Certainly, certainly. This is the description that goes with the picture. Gumbaroo got three bowed rear legs, each with a claw foot clutching an iron ball, same as an iron stove. There's no speed in these rear legs, but they're handy for wading dumps. For real travel, he's got eight pairs of strong springy legs around his middle. Okay. <laughs> he's plenty rapid on those. He'll go to a hilltop by swinging from branch to branch with his forelegs, then toss himself out a rod or two, landing sideways on the middle legs and rolling downhill, faster than the eye can see. And that's why he's so rarely observed. I think if, if that were fucking happening, <laughs> it'd be quite conspicuous. <laughs> if a black bear-sized rubber ball was flying around a forest, <laughs> probably attract a lot of fucking attention. Yeah! It's glossing over the main thing about this image, which is that it's wearing shoes. <laughs> so, you know how earlier yes. I told you the other yes. Gumbaroo looks like a bear? Yeah. What the hell did they see? What is this animal that they confused with the Gumbaroo? It's crazy! I mean, I assume the shoes are gum boots, and that's why it's a Gumbaroo, because it's made of gum, and that's why everything bounces off it. <laughs> Let's move on to its geographical location. Okay. It chills around the Pacific coast. You say it chills around the Pacific coast, apparently it's bouncing everywhere like a ball. <laughs> you know what this makes me think of? You know one of those is like the original Sonic design? And then the second one is like, after the outrage, it looks like a cute <laughs> bear with eyebrows. <laughs> but Sophie Yes, sir. Interestingly enough About its geographical location Yes 
According to Tryon, Paul Bunyan met the Gumbaru quite a few times in the upside down country. Yeah, they don't really go into detail. Yeah, what's what's I upside don't down know. country? <laughs> it's where upside down Bergenworth is probably. <laughs> Better known as Upside Down Dignity City. I, Nostradamus the Vampire, have risen from the dead to give you a quiz. Why does he give it a quiz? I don't fucking... Um, the quiz question is... What is Dignity City? Leave your answers below. For people who don't know, Paul Bunyan is like an American folklore character. He's basically just a giant. He's a giant lumberjack, he has a pet ox that's blue. So I assume we'll be running into Paul a lot during this series. I have no idea what the hell the Upside Down Country is though. I tried googling it briefly and I didn't really come across anything. When we data mine America, we'll find like some Upside Down <laughs> assets. <laughs> what is historical research if not data mining? <laughs> Thank you, Sophie. So now let's talk about its diet. Gumbaru likes to go on marauding expeditions. Yeah, yeah. This is presumably when it's bouncing everywhere. <laughs> and during these expeditions, it's extremely hungry and it's anything that looks like food. And I'm going to quote Coxpear. I like how we're treating them as if this is a serious <laughs> So, according to Cox, a whole horse may be eaten at one sitting, distending the gumbaru out of all proportions, but failing to appease its hunger or cause it the slightest discomfort. Seems like a cool cryptid. Do you feel a connection to it? Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> In between recordings, Sin goes on her marauding expeditions. <laughs> so in between these episodes, Sin, Sin left and came back with a plate of sandwiches. <laughs> but she didn't want to put it down, she was trying to put her headphones on. <laughs> while also holding the sandwiches. <laughs> oh no! Oh no! <laughs> but I didn't drop it! I succeeded! <sighs> you could have put it on the table. I also could have not licked a knife. Apparently Sophie doesn't do this. No. <laughs> After I finished my sandwich, I had to eat it with a knife and fork because it was too big. And I instinctively just licked the knife. And Sophie freaked out. Oh. She was like, <gasps> Okay, you, you cut like a couple of square inches of skin off <laughs> shaving your leg the other day. I don't trust you with a knife in your fucking mouth. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you, Sophie. Now let's talk about some of its habits. Okay. We don't see the Gumbaru too often because apparently it likes to hide in the base of enormous burnt out cedar trees most of the time. But I'll have to stop you there. <laughs> because according to the cryptid wiki, they're seen all the time. Oh, really? Yeah. Source? No. <laughs> Not even an imaginary source. <laughs> I expect more from the cryptid wiki. <laughs> and now let's move on to when they were spotted. According to Tryon, S.W. Allen photographed one, but the negative exploded. <sighs> King Allen, we can't trust you to do anything, <laughs> can we? <laughs> Sophie. Yes, sir. Now, how do we catch one? All right, so I gave this a lot of thought, right? Because one of the properties of the Gumbaru is it's made of this rubbery stuff, so if you shoot it or you hit it, it just bounces right off. Mm -hmm. Only thing you can do is use fire. I don't think we should. We'll endanger the forest. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I was thinking, like, what is the closest thing we have to a Gumbaru? What's, like, a really big thing that has huge eyebrows? Brezhnev? Brezhnev. The Gumbaru is Brezhnev. 
So I was thinking, well, well, what happened to Brezhnev? And there was a failed attempt to assassinate Brezhnev. There was? There was. They tried to shoot him in a motorcade, JFK style. Didn't work. The bullets hit the driver and someone else in the car, but not Brezhnev. We know why now. It bounced off him. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, yeah. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. So then I was like, okay, what else did bring Brezhnev down? And what brought Brezhnev down was poor health due to his smoking. <laughs> oh no. We gotta get the gumbaru hooked on cigarettes. Oh my god. <laughs> That sounds like the safest and most ethical way to catch one. Yeah, yeah. Um, I also thought, you know, what is what is something else that's like a Gumbaroo? And I thought, well, Gumbaroo's a bit like Plastic Man, the uh, DC Comics character. Right? Okay. So, like, all, all superheroes have to have a weakness, right? Mm-hmm. Superman's got Kryptonite. Mm-hmm. Batman's got the name Martha. Plastic Man. He's weak to acetone. Because he's made of plastic. Ah. Uh-huh. Right, so where do we get acetone? You get it in nail polish remover. Uh huh. So we just got to go down to the pharmacy, get ourselves a nail polish remover. Oh, God. Gumbaroo stands no chance against us. Those boots will be ours. Sophie, do the outro. That was How to Catch a Fearsome Credit title pending. <laughs> With Sophie and Sin, we talked about the Gumbaroo. Shortly before its its invasion of Czechoslovakia. Oh my god. <laughs> well, thank you, Sophie. Thank you, Sam. Thank you everyone for listening. And see you next time when we talk about the Rope Right. Bye. Bye.